sharing good news of great joy to all people. Elation Church. Welcome to Elation Church. We're excited that you're joining in with us this week for worship. And if you're joining us from Champions Gate, Davenport, South Claremont, Kissimmee, or anywhere else in the Four Corners region, we'd like to invite you to join us live every Sunday morning at Citrus Ridge Academy. And that's just off of Highway 27 at Sand Mine Road. And we look forward to seeing you there every Sunday at 10 o'clock. Now, as we get this service rolling, we always start by singing a song together. And let's join in together. Lift up your voice. Don't just sit there and listen to us sing. We encourage you to sing along with us as we lift up the name of Jesus, the name above all names. You were the word in the One with God, the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory and creation now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus, you brought heaven. Let's pray together. God, I thank you for today. Thank you for each person joining in with us. And I pray that as we set aside this time to look into your word, that you would speak to our hearts by your Holy Spirit, cause your truth to come alive on the inside of us in such a way that it changes us from the inside out. 
In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Well, it's hard to believe that it's week number eight in our series, and we're in a series discovering about who God is by looking at and studying the names that He has given us for Himself in Scripture. Each week we begin by talking about names. I mean, what are, what are names really all about? Well, first of all, names signify identity. And we all have names to let people know our identity. Now, I've, I've shared this with you, this humorous thing about my life. Um, surely you've been to those events where you have to write down your name. Hello, my name is, and they give you a name tag. But if I was truthful, each time when I went to an event like that, I would have to write no name on my name tag because my parents didn't name me before we left the hospital when I was born. So my South Carolina birth certificate actually had no name Forrest on it when I first got my official raised, you know, certified South Carolina birth certificate. Had no name Forrest. I had to change my name to the name I've been going by for the first 13 years of my life and that is Jeffrey Dean Forrest. I, I just go by Dean. People who know me best just call me Dean. And then there's another name that gives me identity. It's who I am. And it's as important as Dean Forrest or Jeffrey Dean Forrest. And that is the name Christian because I am a Christ follower. Names signify identity, but they do more than that. Names also signify relationship relationship and we all have relationship names right um i'm first of all my first name was that i was a son and and a brother because i had two older sisters and an older brother um i've a co i'm a cousin and i can't even tell you how many cousins i have i haven't even met all of my cousins because my dad's family was so large um i'm i'm a nephew because my parents were not only children, so that makes me a nephew on my mom's side and my dad's side. And then I got married in 1984, and I became a husband, right? And then I was the first one in my family to get to get married, even though I was the youngest of four siblings. Um, I was the first one to get married, but I became an uncle next, as my as my sisters both had sons before. My son was born, Jeffrey, and then I became a father. So all of those are relationship names. So names signify identity, names signify relationships, but names do something else. Names also signify action or activity, what a person does. And I have so many names. Um, I'll just give you a few of student, salesman, sound man, janitor, screen printer, and our director, full-time RVer, vice president, music director, event planner, crusade director, president, worship leader, conference director, evangelist, chaplain, preacher, pastor. I've got all kinds of names that I have been called and titles that have been placed on me, right? Just like you do. But all of those are names that signify my activity, my action, what I do what role I play. Now, I've shared a lot of names with you. As a matter of fact, I've shared with you 27 names, and the reason why I stopped at 27 names was because Elation Church, our live services are just off of Highway 27, and that's where our target ministry is because there's 100,000 people between I-4 and 1982 on Highway 27 who aren't in church every week. So that's our mission field. But I share with you 27 names, but I'm only one person. I'm not 27 different people. And that's important when we look at the names of God in Scripture. We're not talking about a lot of different gods because God is one. God is one essence revealed in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's important to remember even though we get a different name each week, sometimes more than one name, we're still talking about one God, the true living God, the creator of heaven and earth. And his name is Yahweh. That's the name. That's his eternal name that he has given to his people that they're supposed to remember him by, right, is Yahweh. So what's in a name? Identity, relationship, and action are what a person does. 
Now, Psalm 910 tells us something. And this verse is very important in this series. It says this, And those who know your name will put their trust in you, for you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. All right? So what does that tell us? When we know God's name, the people who know God's name can put their trust in Him, can put their confidence in Him, can find their refuge in Him by faith. Right? So, when we know His name, then we can put our trust in Him. And then we know that when we seek Him based on who He is and the promises that He's made, you know what? We know that He will not forsake us. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. That's what His Word says. So we know that He won't turn His back on us. He won't say no. He he won't say not now. He will not forsake us. Now, this week, we're going to look at a story before I even reveal the name of God, because the end of the story reveals the name. The very last words of this text reveal the name that we're going to be looking at today. And I want to draw your attention to Exodus chapter 17, verses 8 through 15. Now, this is just after God's people had come out of slavery and captivity in Egypt. They had just crossed the Red Sea. They were on their way to the promised land. And we pick up the story at verse 8. It says, While the people of Israel were still at Rephidim, the warriors of Amalek attacked them. Moses commanded Joshua, Choose some men and go out and fight the army of Amalek for us. Tomorrow I will stand at the top of the hill, holding the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did what Moses had commanded and fought the army of Amalek. Meanwhile, Moses, Aaron, and Hur climbed to the top of a nearby hill. As long as Moses held up the staff in his hand, the Israelites had the advantage. But whenever he dropped his hand... The Amalekites gained the advantage. Moses' arms soon became so tired, he could no longer hold them up. So Aaron and Ur found a stone for him to sit on. Then they stood on each side of Moses, holding up his hands, so his hands held steady until sunset. As a result, Joshua overwhelmed the army of Amalek in battle. After the victory... The Lord instructed Moses, write this down on a scroll as a permanent reminder and read it aloud to Joshua. I will erase the memory of Amalek under heaven, God said. Moses built an altar there and named it Yahweh Nisi. Yahweh Nisi, which means the Lord is is my banner. Now, if you listen carefully to that story, you find that God's people were at a place of rest in Rephidim. They were at a place of rest, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, an attack came from the Amalekites. So, Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the mountain, and Moses said, I'm going to hold up my staff. And the staff was the symbol of God's power among God's people at that time. And he said, I'm going to hold it up. And you know what happened? As long as the staff was held high, as long as the staff was held high, God's people prevailed. God's people won. God's people had the advantage. But when he grew weak and his arms fell, God's people lost the advantage and the Amalekites had the advantage and they would begin winning in the battle. So they helped Moses hold up this rod. And as long as the rod was up, God's people had the advantage and God's people were victorious that day. And then right after that happened, Moses built an altar and he named it Yahweh Nisi. The Lord is my banner. Because what took place that day was more than Moses holding up a stick. (laughs) He was holding up a banner as he was holding up that stick. And basically what he said was, this is more than a stick because Yahweh is 
our banner. Yahweh is my banner. Yahweh Nisi, I am, the great I am, the eternally present God who is self-existent, never needing or depending on anyone or anything to begin or maintain his existence, is my banner. And that's what we're going to talk about today. What was all encompassed in this, this rod and in God being their banner? The rod was just a symbol. The banner, um, you know, him holding that up, that's just symbolic of the real fact that God was their banner that day. So what did the rod represent? Well, it was a banner of identification. A banner of identification. See, as God's people left, I mean, even before they left, when, when Moses was confronting the Pharaoh saying, let my people go, God used this staff in, in releasing his people. God used this staff as they came up to the Red Sea and the Red Sea was open and they walked across on dry land. So, it was a banner of identification. This staff came to mean that we are God's people. We identify with the God who has shown his power and might over our adversaries and our enemy and our captors. We, we are his people. So God is our banner of identification. But how does that apply to me and you today? Because God's not only their banner, God is my banner, and we take hold of who God is each week by faith, remember? If you've been with us on this journey, you know you got to hear about it first, then you have to believe it, right? Then you have to put your words in agreement with it, then you have to surrender to it. So how is God my banner of identification? Well... When Yahweh Nisi, when I am is my banner, here's what it means. It means I'm on God's side. I'm on God's side and He is for me and I am a child of the King of eternity. So, Yahweh Nisi, the great I am, is my banner. And that's my identification because I'm on His side He's for me, and I am his child. What else was this banner? What else did this staff represent and God being our banner, Yahweh Nisi? Well, God is also a banner of remembrance. See, as God's people, as they were fighting the battle, if they looked up on the hill and they saw this staff, you know what? They remembered that God had brought them out of slavery. They remembered that they were trapped and it looked like all hope was gone and they, they were, there was a Red Sea in front of them and the greatest army of the world was behind them. They were trapped. It was impossible. There was no way out. But there was a way because God made a way through the middle of the Red Sea. It was a banner of remembrance that the greatest army in the world was defeated and God did it. They didn't have to pick up a sword or a bow and arrow, or a spear. No, God defeated the greatest army in the world. So this was a banner of remembrance for them. But how does that apply to me and you today? Well, God is our banner of remembrance. Yahweh, the great I am, is my banner of remembrance. See, when I think about who God is, and I remember how He has brought me through, I mean, have you ever been in impossible situations before? Have you, ever, have you ever come up against something that you thought there was no way out without a miracle? I mean, it seems like I see that often in my life. But if Yahweh is my Nisi, if God is my banner, then I remember how He has brought me through because He is my banner of remembrance. What else did this banner, this staff, represent that day on the hillside? Well, it was a banner of announcement. A banner of announcement. You see, we find out that the people in the, in the wilderness all the way to the land of Canaan, they heard about 
this God that got his people out of slavery in Egypt and defeated the greatest army in the world. The, the rumors went ahead of them that they were coming. That's why the Amalekites wanted to take them out, right? It was a banner of announcement. As Moses held up that staff, it was like, here we are. You've heard about us and our God. It was a banner of announcement for God's people and for God Himself. Now, how does that apply to your life and my life today? Well, I am is my banner of announcement too. See, in my relationship with Him, I can, I can share testimony and I can testify and I can tell people who I am and remind them of what God has done. Right? Because God is my banner of announcement. When I, when I talk about God just doing these miraculous things in my life, it's an announcement that, that I am under God's banner. That I live and move and have my being the way I live. It's announcing to everyone whose I am because I'm a child of the King and what my God has done. It's announcing that, you know what? It may look like I'm down. It may look like I'm out. It might, may look like I'm over. But with Yahweh Nisi, everybody knows that I'm going to make it through. And I know myself that I'm going to make it through when God is my banner. It's also a banner of focus. It was for them and it is for us today. Now the staff, as long as it was raised on the hillside, the army of God, the Israelites, they, they weren't even really an army at this point. They had, they had been making bricks to build all the buildings in Egypt. There were, there were no trained fighters among them at all. But as long as that staff was raised, as long as that banner was raised, it was a point of focus. And as they were fighting the Amalekites, all they had to do was look up and see that and it brought focus back to who they were and what people they were, their identification and all those things that we've talked about. And they were strengthened to continue in their fight because they knew that God was with them and they remembered what God had done. How does that apply to us today? Well, with Yahweh Nisi, when I am is my banner, it means that I will keep my eyes on God I will keep my eyes on who He is. I will keep my eyes on what He has done, especially during difficult times. You see, when we face challenging days and when we face trouble, so many times our focus goes to the trouble or goes to the challenge or goes to the battle that we're in. But if we keep our eyes on Yahweh Nisi, if we focus on God being our banner, we keep our eyes on Him and who He is and what He has done, we can actually be victorious in the middle of the fight and not lose faith, not lose hope, not be discouraged, not be depressed, not be downtrodden because God, Yahweh, is our banner of focus. He's also our banner of hope. Our banner of hope. And if you could imagine fighting in that valley that day and, and Moses is up on the hillside and Aaron and her are helping him hold that rod up, as long as that rod was raised, as long as that staff was raised, they knew to not quit or surrender. Don't quit or surrender as long as the banner of hope is raised. As long as the staff is raised. We're still in this fight. And it reminds me of early battles, you know what? When somebody would be defeated, when a fort would be defeated, when a ship would be conquered, what would happen? Well, as soon as the enemy took the fort, they would lower the flag of the people who had been running the port or the fort, and then they would, they would raise their flag. And you know what? When the enemy would take your fort and raise their flag, you would say, well... It's time to quit and surrender because we've lost. Moses holding that staff in the air 
as the, as the fighters under Joshua, as they would look up and see that staff, they would say, nope, it's not time to quit. It's not time to surrender. We're still in this fight. What does that mean to you and to me? Well, when God is our banner of hope, as long as Yahweh Nisi, as long as Yahweh is my banner, as long as my flag is flying, there is hope. I will not give up because I have a confident expectation even in the middle of the battle, even in the middle of the struggle, I have a confident expectation that God is going to see me through because He's done it before and He'll do it again. You know what? God is also a banner of victory. A banner of victory. Now, as long as Moses was holding up that staff we saw in the story, as long as it was raised... God's people were victorious. God's people had the advantage as long as the banner was raised. That staff was a banner of victory. And you know what? God is our banner of victory. In this world, over this world, over any challenge we face, we are victorious. And I want to close today by talking to you about 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Now, in the New King James Version, it reads this way. Now, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Can I get an amen? Thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. But I want to share it with you from another version, which is not even a version or a translation. It's a paraphrase. It's, it's the Message Bible, but... The very interesting thing about this verse is if you study the Greek language and Greek history and you look at these words, the message may have the most accurate translation out of all the other translations. This is what I discovered by by digging in deep to these Greek words in 2 Corinthians 2.14. Listen to the message translation. It says this, In the Messiah, in Christ, God leads us from place to place in one perpetual victory parade. I have to read this again. In the Messiah, in Christ, in Jesus, God leads us from place to place in one perpetual victory parade. Now, During the time when the New Testament was written, Rome was ruling over the known world at this time. And you know what? Rome would go in and they would conquer a city. They would conquer a nation. And here's what they would do. When they conquered, they would have a parade in that city. All the soldiers, they would be fanfare and flags. They'd put on their parade armor and and you know the real dress up stuff not their fighting stuff they would have a parade and they would they would parade the conquered king or the leader of that people they would they would be out front as slaves and they'd be dragging them and things like that but there would be a big parade and as rome conquered the known world it was like it was a perpetual victory parade during this time in history because they would just go conquer town to town to town to city to village to nation and they, they would conquer and they would have these victory parades because we are victorious. You know what? In Christ. In Jesus. When we are in Him. When, when He is our Lord. When we've surrendered our lives to Him. When we've turned from our sin and confessed our sin and surrendered our lives to Him. You know what? God, this is what the Christian life should look like. God is leading us from place to place in one perpetual victory parade. And that's the picture of what the Bible says when it says, Thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ because God is our banner. God is our banner and God is our victory. And it, you know what? Sometimes it don't look like we're very victorious. Sometimes it might not feel like we're very victorious, but we are. We are. 
God always leads his people in triumph in Christ. It doesn't mean that there's not a battle. It just means that we are victorious and we always triumph in Christ. Because we're God's kids. The great I am is our banner. And, and we need to take hold of that today. We need to, we need to realize that. We need, that needs to be our focus. We, that needs to be our remembrance. And all those things that we talked about today, we, we need to know that. And any time when the enemy whispers defeat in our ear and we think we're not going to make it or we think it's over, we need to, we need to say, no, <laughs> not today. I'm not falling for that negative report. I'm not falling for that depression. I'm not falling for, for that discouragement. I'm not falling for that defeat because Yahweh is my banner. And we stand in victory in a perpetual victory parade in Christ. Let's pray together. God, I thank you for your truth. I thank you for your word. And I just pray that you would help us to take hold of your truth by faith. Help us to not reject it based on what's going on around us, what we see, what we think, or what we feel, but help us to take hold of your truth by faith and live in it and be strong in faith. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining with us here this week at Elation Church. And thanks for being a part of our Elation family. If today's message was an encouragement to you, would you consider sharing it with all of your social media friends? All you have to do is hit that share button right under the video. In doing that, you'll be joining with us in our mission of bringing good news of great joy to all people. And we look forward to seeing you right back here next week at Elation Church. This online worship experience was brought to you by the friends and partners of Elation Church.